Have you ever been in the clinic, you're looking at that whole shelf of different cements and you just feel that little wave of panic? Yeah, you are definitely not alone. Today, we are going to demystify one of the most fundamental topics in all of restorative dentistry, dental cements. Welcome to Understanding Dentistry, your go-to channel for breaking down the tough topics. We're here to help you bridge that gap between what you learn in the classroom and what you do in the clinic, making sure you feel confident and totally prepared. You know the names, glass ionomer, ZOE, resin, polycarboxylate. I mean, the names alone can be a mouthful, right? But don't worry, by the end of this, you're not only gonna know the difference between them, you'll have a really clear framework for when and why to use each one. We'll start with the absolute basics, then we'll dive into the three main families, the reliable water-based cements, the soothing oil-based ones, and of course, the powerhouse resin cements. To wrap it all up, we'll look at some of the special jobs these materials do. So let's get right into it. So first things first, what exactly is a dental cement? I mean, before we can even start comparing them, we have to know what we're actually dealing with. Let's break it down to its core. At its heart, a dental cement is pretty simple. It's just a powder and a liquid that you mix together and they form a hard, solid material. And really, it has two main jobs, to act as a glue to hold restorations in place and to act as a shield to protect that vital pulp from any harm. And those two big jobs break down into a few really important applications. You've got looting, which is just a fancy word for gluing things down like crowns and bridges. Then you have bases, which act as a solid foundation under your fillings. Liners are like a thin, protective shield for the pulp. And of course, you can even use cements as temporary fillings. It's this versatility that makes them so incredibly crucial in our day-to-day -day work. All right, first up, the water-based cements. You can think of these as the tried and true workhorses of the dental world. What makes them so special is their ability to form a true chemical bond with the tooth. And in some cases, they even release fluoride, which helps prevent cavities. It's pretty cool stuff. This table gives you a fantastic side-by-side -side look at the three main water-based cements. So over on the left, you've got your classic glass ionomer, or GI. We love it for its chemical bond through a process called chelation. That's where the cement literally grabs onto calcium ions in the tooth. In the middle is the hybrid ionomer, which is basically a supercharged version of GI. It's stronger and more durable. And on the right, we have zinc polycarboxylate. Now, it may not be the strongest of the bunch, but it is incredibly gentle and kind to the pulp. Now, this slide highlights a really critical point. These materials are incredibly technique sensitive. To get all those fantastic properties, you have to follow the instructions perfectly. Take a look at step two. Using a cool glass slab isn't just a suggestion. It's a clever way to slow down that chemical reaction. It actually buys you precious extra working time before the cement starts to set. Okay, listen up, because this is super important. Hybrid ionomers are fantastic, but they have a potential fatal flaw. See, they absorb water and expand as they set. Now for a strong metal crown, that's not a big deal. But for a delicate, all ceramic crown, this expansion can be an absolute disaster. It can literally crack the crown. So burn this into your brain. Never use a hybrid ionomer with an all ceramic crown. All right, next up we have the oil-based cements. And I want you to think of these as the comfort food of the dental world. While the water-based cements are all about strength and protection, these oil-based cements are designed for one thing, to soothe and calm an irritated tooth. The magic word here is obtundent. It's just a fancy way of saying soothing. And this is the key property of our main oil-based cement, which is zinc oxide eugenol, or ZOE. The eugenol, which actually comes from oil of cloves, has this natural calming effect on the pulp. It's kind of like a cup of chamomile tea for your tooth. Because it's so soothing, ZO is the perfect choice for temporary crowns or as a base under a really deep filling. But, and this is a huge but, the eugenol in ZO will stop resin composites from curing properly. Why? Well, eugenol is what we call a free radical scavenger, which means it stops the very chemical reaction that makes resin get hard. So I'll say it again, never ever place a composite filling directly on top of a ZO base. And now we enter the world of high performance dentistry. We've gone from cements that soothe to cements that are engineered for one thing and one thing only, maximum unbelievable strength and adhesion. Welcome to the age of resin cements. This slide pretty much tells you everything you need to know. Zoe is gentle, but it's weak. Resin cements, on the other hand, are incredibly strong, but they need a little help from a bonding agent to be kind to the pulp. 
they are truly two sides of the same coin and they each have a very specific job to do. For all you visual learners out there, this chart is a game changer. It shows compressive strength in something called megapascals, or MPA. Just think of it as a toughness score. The higher the number, the more force it can handle. So zinc polycarboxylate is down here around 75 MPA. Glass ionomer is twice as strong, at 150. But then look at the bar on the far right. Adhesive resin just blows them both out of the water with a strength of 200 MPA or even more. When you absolutely need a restoration to be rock solid, resin is the undisputed champion. So the resin family has three main branches. You've got the pretty resins, which are perfect for cosmetic work, like veneers, where getting the shade just right is everything. Then you have the strong resins, those high strength workhorses for crowns and bridges. And finally, you've got the easy resins, the self-adhesive ones that are an awesome all-in-one solution when you're a bit short on time. To finish things up, let's explore some of the other hats that these cements wear. They're not just for gluing things down, they're also essential as foundations, as shields, and even in specialized fields like orthodontics. You know, it's so important to understand the difference between a base and a liner. A high strength base, like a thick layer of glass ionomer, acts as a strong foundation under a big filling, giving it support. A low strength base or liner, like calcium hydroxide, is more like a healing balm. It's there for a therapeutic benefit, to actually encourage the pulp to repair itself. Okay, here is a number you need to burn into your memory not just for exams, but for the clinic. For a base to effectively insulate the pulp from hot and cold, it has to be at least half a millimeter thick, anything less than that, and you're just not giving the pulp the protection it really needs. And let's just take a quick look at some special applications. In ortho, you need a super strong bond for brackets. So of course, resin is the way to go. But for molar bands, glass ionomer is the better choice because it releases that helpful fluoride. And in endodontics, a lot of root canal sealers are based on ZOE, just because it's so gentle on all the surrounding tissues. So there you have it. That's your complete guide to the world of dental cements. You now have the knowledge, you have the framework to make smart, informed decisions in the clinic. The next step is to take what you've learned today and apply it to your patients, choosing the perfect material for each unique situation. You've got this. Thanks so much for tuning in.